It's Noof from Better Music, and I'm joined today by Better Music's bass manager, Rog. Hey, Rog. Hey, how you going? <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm pretty damn awesome. Thanks for showing up to work and being here today. That's what I do. He's always here. <laughs> hey, uh, all right, so today's video presentation is brought to you by Ernie Ball Music Man. Okay, these are the 2000 and, what are they, 2018 design, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, you would have seen these around. Everyone's seen the Music Man Stingray. If you haven't, you've been living under a pretty huge rock. Okay, so I've just I've got an example of a five string. Roger's got the uh, four string. Backstory, real quick. Late seventies, these guys came out with an active bass with a humbucker in the bridge position. Da -da, like that, and the legacy started from there. Active meaning, if you guys are not familiar with that, uh, it generally means that there's a 9 volt battery in the back powering a, a preamp on board. It's like a little computer that tells the bass to be bigger and like a 10 dB increase. You've got more tonal scope as far as the bass and the treble. You've now got a mid-range control pot. And that's, these guys kind of wrote the book on how to do a whole active bass. They've been reinvented. Yeah, that's safe yep, to say, correct. right? Reinvented. The next are usually pretty blonde. These are both maple fretboards. Uh, it might not look like it on camera, but uh, are these roasted? Yep, so all st uh, special Stingrays, um, 2018, 2019 onwards, are flame roasted as a stock option. So that's every that's the default on all the Stingrays. Yeah, they kind of got that. It's almost like they're pre-aged looked looking a little bit. Um, I know working in other areas of the shop that do the roasting or the torrification or whatever buzzword you want to use. So basically they, uh, they cook them and makes them far more stable. Uh, and, and the next, uh, so they sort of settle in a lot better, especially when it comes to the fretboards. You don't get that fretboard shrinkage where the frets hang out. Okay, the big features for the 2018, as you're saying, 19 yeah. onwards. Okay, the, a couple of the big things. Uh, I want to go to that preamp. If we flip this guy over, I'll show, I'll show it on mine as well. Um, guys, on the back, we have one, two uh, battery bays. We are now at a, what's that, 18? 10 volt, yep. <laughs> so 9 volt plus 9 volt gives you 18. Good maths. Okay, um, so we're at 18 volt preamp. We've still got the, the treble, the bass, the mid, treble, bass, mid, yeah, it controls with the volume. On the five string, you've got the pickup selector. This is a double humbucking version. There is also the, they still do a single, right, yep, in correct, the five yep. string. And then Roger's got your more conventional single string, uh, single pickup, sorry. What's with the hardware? Because I've not, because I'm, a, I own a Stingray as well, uh, and I've just like this morning I was playing them, and the machine heads are different. Yeah, so they've um they've got lightweight. It's like the diet Stingray, pretty much. They've um, made it really nice and light, so they've um just one calorie, just one calorie, just about yeah. So lightweight um machine heads, so still Music Man made. Um, the bridge as well is nice and light. And that's it. It's still it's still a full weight body. Um, so they're not still, chambered. They're not chambered. Still a nice chunky beefy there music is a man myth tone. out there that they are chambered. I heard yes, somebody correct. talking about them being chambered, and I'm like, eh, that would kind of defeat the purpose of. That's no, still a full stingray where it counts. <laughs> we do like a full stingray. Uh, oh, the big thing too. I uh, like a little bit on the four string, but definitely on the five. Oh, uh, actually no, I will talk about this. The contouring of the body. Uh, we'll see if we can get a nice close shot of that. Not my body, I've got plenty of contours, but the bass, uh, it just feels so much more 
it's well, look, it's just comfortable. It's like hugging an old pillow. It's gorgeous. Or me. You can come and give me hugs if you want to know what a stingray feels like. It's like hugging an old pillow. So it's just it feels a little bit more ergonomic. And I feel like the, the heel might have changed a little bit. It's just it's, what did you, what did you you got a name? Yeah, so they've um the neck plate they've gone to like the five bolt down from the six bolt. So they've contoured it for those who like to okay. play up in this region, for those virtuosos who do pretty cool stuff up in here. They've You're telling me it. people pay, play past the twelfth fret. So I hear. So I hear they do. But yeah, they've made it nice and easy for those that do like to noodle up in here a little bit. Nice easy access. Easy access for stuff above the twelfth fret, whatever whoever does that. Uh, <laughs> anything past the fifth fret, yeah. Uh, really, I only use two strings. Um, so that's that's uh, uncharted territory for myself. But we're going to do some playing examples. Uh, we'll try and mess around with the EQs a little bit. Uh, if, if you're curious, we are running them through a, a Mesa Boogie WD800 uh, head, the one with the uh, valve pre. Super light. You should come and check one out. Uh, and we're keeping it all flat, okay? Uh, we have got it set to the active position. Um, hopefully we'll get a close enough shot of that so you can see. We're not, we're not touching anything on there and just running it through a Mesa uh, 2x12. Not that you guys can hear that one too much because we're actually DI'ing out of this head. So it's going to be a nice clean sound. This is a great example of how well they record. Um, you know, I still use my Stingray Live and they... It's an absolute powerhouse. It's an essential tool that every bass player should have in their toolbox. We'll have a listen to a couple of different playing examples and uh, yeah, if you want to come and try one out, you've actually got to get one of these into your hands. All right, Rog will see you in the shop. Come and see Rog, see that guy. Woo! So that was um that's all the settings flat. I'm not bumping or boosting the EQ in any way. Everything's flat. I'll give it a little bit of my my favorite stingray sound, which is what I do is I just take the treble off just a little bit, a little bit of mids, so probably about 55% so mids. Boosting, boosting mids. Boosting mids. So are you cutting the treble as much as you're boosting the mids? Yeah, about that. Yeah, so I'll probably go around to 45% treble, about 55% mids, and I like to take the bass up to around maybe the 70%. Yes. Volumes on full. Yes. To me, this is the stingray sound. Again, just some finger funk for you. And then if you were wanting to go for the more... I've yeah. got, got to stop it. No. I, I hope you guys heard that. Like I, In here, that is pretty much the, the thunder phone. That is, that is the textbook Stingray kind of sound, like for, for finger style. That was uh, kicking it pretty hard, man. Yeah, this yeah. is these are a funk machine, but um, in, in keeping it in the funk line of things, the Stingrays are notoriously known for being the slap slappers base. Oh yeah, go for so it. So in terms of like a slap setting, generally you like to stay bass. flat. Maybe just scoop the mids out a fair chunk, and these are pretty bright in nature, so I'll keep the treble at around the forty percent mark. Bring mm -hmm. that bass in a little more. I'll give you a little bit of like a Lewis Johnson inspired sort of lick. <laughs> That's pretty much bang on. I want to point out something else uh, up really close on the bass. It's, it's a fail-safe method for, for someone like me. So I jump between a pick and also using my fingers, but for my thumb, thumb position, a lot of Stingray players will go, yeah, yeah, uh, we already know about that, but you kind of fall into this by default. I'd be interested to know if there's any Stingray players who don't do this. Your thumb fits right between these two screw holes, the, right in here, and it just gets you in the sweet spot. I know, I've, look, I've got a range of other bases, but this one, it's just, you pick it up. It's, um, even when you get a brand new Stingray, it's just like having an old pair of boots. Bam, you're, you're locked in. You are in the perfect position. Yeah, you can't stuff it up. That's it. It is that easy, man. Like, and these things are like tofu. You can put them with anything. They just take on that flavor. I've seen Jazz Cats doing them. Pino Palladino has yeah. a, he's got that fretless one. He's got a one. fretless signature, yep. Uh, if yep. you don't know who Pino Palladino is, do your homework. Pino Palladino. Uh, check him out. If you don't know who Flea is, 
uh, drums are that way. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that like yeah, there's a, a multitude of great Stingray players, but they're the first two that sort of jumped on my head. Two that you should definitely check out. Pino's John Mayer's bass but, player. Um, isn't he? Yeah, Pino does play for John Mayer. Thanks for <laughs> the crowd. Hey, um, woo! <laughs> okay, so with the five string, I'm just going to do this really, really quickly. Uh, like I may have said before, I'm a four string player, so I don't know what this thing is, but somebody told me it was a B string. So. The B string bass, five string, the B on the five string. <sighs> Look, this is probably the easiest one to play. I've played a couple of different uh, branded five strings before or tried to play them. Um, uh, two things I run into. One, it's uncomfortable to play. It's just not, does, it just doesn't feel natural um, reaching, especially down in this area. If you happen to wear your bass in a higher position, or actually, it doesn't matter, even if in a low position, it's still hard to reach. Um, I find it quite easy on the Stingray. The second and probably the most important, other brands, when you play from the third or fourth fret down, I don't find you get the articulation you do for, that, you know, that you would get from a five-string Stingray. Uh, I'm just gonna do this real quickly. Hopefully you can hear this. Um, I'll do it slower and then faster and you'll actually, the notes don't mash together. Other basses at all, this section all just sounds like one note. Okay, that's pretty basic, right? I've done that on, I've, in the past, I've done that on other basses and it just sounds like I'm playing the same note each time. But there you should have been able to hear some something different. So yeah, guys, uh, please get in store. Come and see Rog. Uh, we've got some pretty hot deals on these things at the moment and he's your man. Thanks for watching, guys. Ha, ha, ha.